inverse relations, interchanging the first and second coordinates of each ordered pair in a relation creates the inverse relation. For a function f of x, f inverse of x, that is f to the negative one of x is how we write that, is its inverse. Consider an original equation y equals x squared plus one. Use the values x equals negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two to create five ordered pairs for the relation. Then create the inverse relation using these coordinates. Graph the two resulting graphs, the original and the inverse. We begin, I'm going to make a table labeled x and y. My x values are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Now the y values can be found by evaluating each of those individually into y equals x squared plus one. So for example, I will take negative two in parentheses squared plus one to get my first value. And that happens to be five. So my y values corresponding to the x values are, well, I'll just read the order pairs. Negative two, five. I have negative one, two. I have zero, one, one, two, and two, five. I'm going to go ahead and graph these points, okay, negative two, five, negative two, five, negative one, two, zero, one, one, two, and two, five. Now my inverse relation will be interchanging the x and y, as we said. So that would be a table of y then x. And that would be interchanging those. I would have five, negative two, two, negative one, one, zero, two, one, and five, two. So if I plot those points, Five, negative two, two, negative one, one, zero, two, one, and five, two. I'm going to connect these points in a smooth curve if I can. Same with the original points. My original relation. And there we have graph the two resulting graphs, the original and the inverse. Using the graph on the previous slide, find the following information about the relation. I'm going to call it F and its inverse. We'll call that G. So the domain of the original function was negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And that is a, a set containing those values. And the range of the original, that's our set of y values. So that is the set five, comma two, comma one, and two and five are already included, so I'm not going to repeat those. The domain of the inverse was five, two, one. Again, that's the set containing five, two, and one. And the range of the inverse was negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Note the domain and ranges, there's a pattern here. The domain of F, I'll write that as the domain of f is the range of g and the do and the range of f is the domain of g they are interchanged as we said we interchange the x and the y coordinates so that only makes sense now, the line y equals x, and you need to note something about that. 
these two graphs are a reflection across the line y equals x. We have symmetry. The graph in our next slide shown below is the graph of a function f. Sketch the graph of the inverse function. So what we have is it is connected four points. First point is negative 6, negative 3. Second point is negative 4, 2. Third point is 2, 5. And the fourth point is, actually, say, let me say that again. Negative 6, negative 3 is the first point. Negative 4, 2 is the second point. 1, 3 is the third point, and 2, 5 is the fourth point. And it's connected by line segments. Now, to sketch this graph, on our graph, we already have the line y equals x shown. We'll interchange the x and the y components so that the point negative 6, negative 3 becomes the point negative 3, negative 6. I'm going to go ahead and plot that point down here. The point negative 4, 2 becomes 2, negative 4. And I'll connect those with a line segment. The point 1, 3 becomes the point 3, 1. And then I'll connect those with a line segment. And the point 2, 5 becomes 5, 2. Again, connecting those two with a line segment. And so we have a reflection across the line y equals x.